In this video, we're going to begin learning how to create two-dimensional sketches inside of Autodesk Inventor. A two-dimensional sketch is the baseline for us to help us create our features to help us develop our parts. So we have to begin a new part file. Here I have the My Home screen, and I could start a new part file by choosing the Part shortcut here. However, I'm going to choose My Advanced Options, and I'm going to choose a predefined template I have called O'Reilly Template.IPT. Now there's really nothing different here about this particular template, except I have my color set up a little bit differently and a few other basic settings about the template. However, if you're going to do this, you can do this from essentially the standard template, which would be under English or metric, depending on what you would like to choose. Just make sure that you grab the IPT and not the sheet metal IPT. So here I'm going to choose my template and I'll just double click on that to get started. You could have also chosen the new command at the top of the screen that also would have gotten you in here as well. A two-dimensional sketch needs to be created on a Cartesian coordinate system, and no better place to do that than one of our origin planes. So let's expand the origin, and here I can see the YZ plane, the XZ plane, and the XY plane. Now I'm looking at the XY plane straight on, so I'm not seeing the XZ or the YZ. If I go up here and click on the Home button on my View Cube, it does turn my model in an isometric fashion, and I can tell that because my triad in the lower left updated to show that. Now, if I hover on the YZ, I get a better understanding of what those look like. So there's the YZ, the XZ, and the XY, as well as the X, Y, and Z axes and the center point. Now, you could turn on the visibility of these planes simply by selecting them or shift selecting them, right clicking and choosing visibility. Then they stay turned on, and when you hover on them, they will highlight with what name they are. Now the selection of a proper origin plane is very crucial to design. If you have a very stable originating feature, in this case an origin plane that doesn't change, and you build intelligently around it, your part will always update in an expected manner. If you deviate from that course and you update in a unexpected manner, it's probably because you didn't choose a stable enough base feature reference or a stable enough origin reference to warrant the changes that you're doing. A lot of new users to Autodesk Inventor who don't understand this concept will create a house of cards scenario where they update one model, but they did the design of that model so poorly and they carried that poor design throughout their entire project that it causes multiple things to fail, such as other parts or assembly constraints and to lose drawing dimensions on your drawing files. So it's really crucial that you use the origin planes effectively. So I'm going to turn out the visibility of these for right now. And what I would like to do is just kind of get into a brand new sketch. So I can do that a couple different ways. I can right click on the screen and choose new sketch. What that will do is present me with all the visible planes that I can select on. So here I can pick on the XY plane, I can pick on the XZ plane or on the YZ plane. I would like to draw on the XY. So I'll go ahead and select this. Notice that the selection process has to be near the edge or on the plane, it can't be outside of it. So make sure I grab that when it's highlighted. And now I have started sketch one on the XY plane. I can validate that by seeing I have XY shown here on my triad. Now the only thing that we see here are our major axes going through that center of the screen there. I also have a yellow center point that has automatically been projected. The whole idea of projection is something that's a little bit unique to Autodesk Inventor. Other programs don't necessarily use the same type of technology, but what I have here is an origin point that has been referenced into the XY plane. The idea of a projected reference allows me to dimension to it and to constrain relationships to it. If I did not have this point, I would be in some serious trouble. So for instance, how about I highlight this with a window and then hit my delete key. Now that point is gone. How do I get it back? Well, I can go up here to my project geometry command and then click on center point. Right click and choose OK, and it has been re projected. Now, what if I would like to use the y axis or the x axis as well? If I choose project geometry, I can simply click on the x axis to project it. Now it is usable for things like lines and circles and rectangles, whatever. If I simply turn on the visibility, like I had done previously, it looks the same, but it is not projected in, it's not referenced in. So when I get close to it, you can see a difference here, how it shows those two dots on the end. Over here, it doesn't show that. 
Watch what happens if I try to start a line command by right clicking and choosing create line. You can see it does not try to connect to this yellow line whatsoever. However, it will try to connect onto this line. So there I can actually connect onto that for referencing. Let me hit escape to get out of the line command there. So if you want to use it, make sure you project it. Right click and choose OK to finish the command. You don't necessarily have to project X and Y axes or the Z axes, whatever you're trying to project. You could just get away with projecting the origin plane. I would say about 80 to 90% of the sketches that you're going to create inside of Inventor will only really need to utilize the origin point, especially if you're drawing effectively, if you're creating that sketch in a very efficient manner. Now, once a sketch has been created, we would put things in here like circles and lines and rectangles and such to help us create our features. Once we need to get out of this environment, we can right click and choose finish sketch as you see down below. Now this environment that I am in is the different sub environment of the part mode. It's known as the sketch environment. You can tell it's a separate sub environment because at the top of the screen, right next to 3D model, I see a green tab called sketch that has a separate set of commands that only are utilized here. If I finish this two dimensional sketch, you can see that tab kind of goes away. It's no longer highlighted. If I go over to it, a lot of the commands have been disabled because I'm not inside of that particular environment. Here I go back to 3D model. In review, your key takeaways here are to utilize an efficient sketching plane and reference it accordingly. If you want to make symmetry around a certain plane, fantastic, do that in your sketch. But what you have to understand is if you don't create something stable and something fully constrained here at this level, as you go throughout your design, things are going to start falling apart. So make sure you can change and update your sketches around your origin features in an effective manner.